Hi and welcome to the seventh part of this HTML CSS beginners tutorial. In the seventh part we're going to add an image to our code. So we want to open up our notepad file. We'll put that on this side and we'll open up Google Chrome and have that on this side here. And we'll just minimize this so we can get to our folder and we'll drag and drop this page into here. So while this folder is open we actually want to uh, create a new folder here. So we're going to create a folder called images and, it's, and this is really where we're going to be storing all of our pictures for our web page. So we open up this images folder, we'll go to this website called Unsplash and here you can download free stock images to use on your website projects or wherever you'd like to use them. We'll find a suitable image that we can use for now. So let's take uh, this one for example. So we'll click on the picture and we'll download it. We can say a little thank you to JR Corpa at Unsplash. This is his image allowing us to use it. So we'll thank him for that. And we'll close this and we're back to our web page. So at the bottom here, underneath the list items we created last time, we want to add a picture. So I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing we should really do is rename this image. So there's two ways, there's a few different ways you can do that. Here's a couple of shortcuts. So you can either right click and then go to rename that way, or you can click on the picture once and then click on it one more time, but not too fast. And if you do that, you, the first one you're selecting the image and then in the sec second click allows you to rename it. Or what I prefer to do is just click on the picture and press F2 on the keyboard. So let's just call this image one. And what I'll do is uh, let's just go back to Unsplash. I'll click on this image. I'll keep a copy of this URL and I'll put that in the YouTube description so you can download the same image if you want to. So let's just make a little note of that. Okay. So we've renamed the file and the file is located in a folder called images. So the path to this file would be images slash image1.jpg, image1.jpg. So let's go back to our code and the first thing we would do is let's just separate these bullet lists from the next part of content we're going to write. So we're going to hit the tab key just to indent and we'll just put in HR for our horizontal rule. And then we'll see this here when we refresh. So you can press F5 to refresh, remember. And now we want to put in the, the code that will, or the tag that will allow us to display the image. So that's quite simple. Um, what we'll do is we'll use our open and close bracket. And we're going to type in IMG for image. And then this tag wants to know the source of the image, where is the location. So SRC stands for source, and then where is it located? So source equals, and then we use the speech marks. So on the keyboard, speech marks, double quotes. Uh, on an American keyboard, it's right here, this key. And then on the UK keyboard, it will be the number two here. So it will be the, the double speech marks or double quotes will be here. So you need to hold down the shift key and hit the number two key if you're in the UK or hold down the shift key and hit this key if you're in America. Okay, so we've got our double speech marks here. And remember, we created a folder called images. And then inside of that image folder, we have a file called image1.jpg, right? And we can just go ahead and save this. And when we reload the page, you'll see there's actually a problem here. So let's try and fix that problem. Normally this is related to um, not having the width and height. So let's put the width in here, WID width, and we'll see if that will fix the error. And if not, uh, something ain't right here then. So images, okay, get rid of this width. So you have to be very careful, right? When you're typing in your code, especially when you're referencing images. So if we were to go back to this folder, we'll see what's the problem here. So let's look carefully. So the folder is called images, but the file is called image one. 
and in here I've typed images one so that's what's causing the error so sometimes you need to look at what you're writing and have a little check to see if something's not quite right and if we were to get rid of that s in theory the picture will show now yeah so here's the picture but if you notice the picture is very large right we're only seeing a small piece and we can scroll all the way to the side and scroll all the way down and it's, it's a massive image really this image would have been compressed um, i'm going to show you that in later tutorials when we come to build um, more of a substance website with more design elements inside we'll be able to look at how we edit this image before we even consider putting it on our web page we really need to resize it and compress it so all the images that we normally display on a web page we would resize them to exactly the right size and then after that we'll compress it and then use uh, the image on the website but for now I'm just showing you the code side of it later I'll show you the tools like GIMP software where we can go and edit that image for free uh, using certain tools so we'll come back to that in a later tutorial so in here we've got another few um, elements that we can add so we can add a width tag or width attribute these are called attributes and we can add a height attribute so just as the source has a, an equals and speech marks, the width and the height has that as well. So let's set this to something like 300 by 250. Now the original image is much wider than that and much taller than that. But using these tags, we can manipulate the image and get it to show a certain size. So 250 looks a bit too high. So we set it at around 200 and then the image isn't getting squashed or stretched. And normally um, we would reset this size using graphic software before we add the image right we'll do that later so there's one thing missing from this you know this uh this line of code here or this content is uh something that's quite important so you should get used to using this it's called the alt tag so we will do we will call this uh flower looks like a flower it looks more like a painting right it looks like a flower there and it looks more like a painting than a, a picture so if we refresh after we put that alt tag in you'll, you'll notice nothing really happens but this alt tag is is really for people with uh, visual disabilities so they have something called a screen reader and if we look at the very top the first thing that the screen reader would read out is the h1 tag so it would say this is this will be the main title for this page so that's what the software for someone that has visual impairments that's what it will read and when it scrolls down and when they move their mouse cursor or they get to this point or this picture the screen reader would read out flower painting image right it will tell the person that this is actually what what is on the screen this is a flower painting so that's why alt tags are quite important and it's it's not only important um, for people with visual impairments but it also helps to give your website a little ranking boosting in the search engines because the search engines like the fact that you're catering for all types of people, people with visual impairments, you're catering for them, well as people that have good eyesight, you know, you're catering for them as well. So that's quite important. Get used to adding alt tags to images. Now you'll notice one thing with this tag, there's no open and close. Look at all the other tags we did. We had an open and close, we had an open and close. So there's always an open and close tag on most of these you can see that even the HTML has an open and it has a close tag but the image tag doesn't need that the image tag doesn't have an open and close tag so the HR and the image tags don't have this open and close tag like these ones here do or these ones here do so like, remember when I first said there's a few exceptions uh, with HTML where we don't need the open and close tag and this is another example and you can see one right above is another example so that is pretty much about about it in terms of adding an image there is a couple of other things we can do actually we can do an align a, a, a line tag right and we can do right so we can say right align the image so i'll save this Control s or click here and then i'll come here and refresh now the image is on the right hand side and we can do left align as well so we can tell it to left align but as default the image will always be left aligned anyway 
you can center the image, but we'll tend to do that using CSS. So in later tutorials, when we come to build a really nice website, just a really, you know, a really good coding example of building a web page, um, we will use uh, CSS to center our images or align them. You can even align them by the pixel, right? So we'll come back and look at that later. So that is how you go about adding an image to your web page. And that's the end of this part of the tutorial. And I look forward to seeing you in the next part.